In this video I'm going to begin the process of finishing or making rather and then finishing the last two uh, carriages of the side corridor type of GWR um, turn of the century 19th 20th century um, coaching stock and this one that you can see on the screen here this is D12 this is a brake and you can see there's the side corridor connection down here down bottom left and then we've got a couple of compartments well we've got one two three compartments with separate male and female lavatories and then a large uh, guards come luggage compartments there's luggage plus these the guards ducats you can see there's the ducket where it sticks out um, at the side and uh, the other one which I'm gonna and this is 56 feet long and it's using the 8 foot 6 uh, uh, churchward bogies and the other one which I'm going to do is E38. So if I just run through my plans here, E30, E38. Here we are, and this is a um, a compo first third. So these are first class compartment. This is a first class compartment here, uh, looking down on it, and you can see that it has um, a door on one side here. This is a smoking saloon section, which is very common in Great Western Railway. Um, uh, carriage stock of this period and so we've got one two uh, compartments first class compartments and we've got one two lavatories the male and female lavatories separate and then we've got a partition door here because over here these are the third class and they have to sh three compartments and they have to share a la single lavatory there but there's the corridor connection at the side and then through this partition door and into the smoking saloon you can see here there's a there's a side corridor connection so these two carriages will add to the ones I've already done and reduce a very substantial uh, side corridor uh, through train um, of, of um, turn of the 19th 20th century GWR coaching stock okay so those are the plans and what I do of course is I go into my drawing program which is a real old chestnut uh, this is Macromedia Freehand 10 which I've had for donkey's years and uh, I'm used to using it so it's very convenient and um, the way I do this is um, is I bring in the that scan of the, the plans from Russell's book about carriages and that goes into the foreground or the base layer and uh, I'll just turn it off again there and then I trace the uh, lining out the panels the doors and everything that I'm going to need in my these are the final um, this is going to be the output for the uh, textures which make up the clerestory and the, the panel sides of the carriage and uh, I, these are all set I know that uh, from doing quite a few of these now this is one foot high here and this is six foot three here and the overall length of these I've set the scale on this so that it's um, one centimeter equals one foot and it comes up to 56 feet these are 56 foot long vehicles quite lengthy vehicles and so these have been um, this particular one I've already uh, produced the I've exported I can undo that don't need to move the guide I've exported these as the uh, textures or, or some way towards the textures and then here uh, these are um, images that I also export because these are going to be my plans for producing the mesh so this is the mesh for the clerestory side with the openings, the apertures, and here for the doors and window side. So those are the holes I'm going to, and that's for the guard's ducket I punch through. I'm going to punch through the imagery. You'll see how I do that as I go through making the model. And so I've exported these already into, uh, created these already. So um, I'm just going to close that one. Um, and now I don't need to save that. And I'll open the other one, E38. And you'll see that I've already done the same thing here. I've, there's the, scan in the background and I've used that to create this master outline here and that from that I generated four what are going to be four textures or rather two actual textures for the carriage this is for the clerestory this is for the side body and um, and then these two are going to be the plans that I'm going to use to draw up the mesh and you see with this one um, it's unusual because it has a, a door on one side so when I come to make the mesh You'll see that I'm going to allow for that. I'm going to have this as a separate section, so that it can either be as it is here, as a um, <coughs> simply as a door. Because if we have a look on the side here, 
Now that's showing it as a that there is cut short for the handle, but but actually it needs to go out like that. So that's actually something I should have done. I should have changed that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here. I often find I've made these mistakes when I come to actually texture the uh, carriage. So I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to um, pick up this one and this one and then carefully highlight those that I want and I'm going to carefully bring them over make sure I keep them absolutely horizontal so they line up there we are yes that's, that's close enough Not, it's just inside here and here that's okay right okay so having done that and I'll save it straight away because this program as I say is really old and I've been running it um, under various versions of Windows and now it's under Windows 10 it does sometimes has a bit of a hissy fit so what I, what I need to do now is export these images so I've already done it with the previous one D12 I'm going to export these images and then in a paint program I'm going to adjust their sizes so the first thing I'm going to do is to highlight and temporarily delete so I'm only left with that plan and I'm going to export it as compo first third uh, clerestory plan there we are save that and then I'm going to undelete I know this seems rather a strange way of doing it but I haven't found another suitable way of doing it in this old program uh, and then export just this as my side plan there we are and undelete those and then delete all of those plus this one okay so we delete that and then we'll export it as Clara story oops spell Clara story side and save that and delete then delete for those and export that as where are we? Uh, file export as the side just the side and these are all going out as JPEGs which is not the suitable format for using in GMAX and then we just under and delete there we are and we're saved because we saved button is greyed out so we know that that's saved so there we are so that's all we need from there and unless I discover I've made yet another mistake which is more than likely and I have to go in and adjust one of these then we won't need this again so let's close that and that and let's go into my very old painting program paint shop pro and um, I'm going to pick up e38 so we're looking in that directory let's have a look first um, E38 now I can leave the plan two plan sides as they are I don't need to worry about them because those are and those are JPEGs they'll appear in GMAX they're not the correct proportions but um, they don't don't matter at all because um, I'm not going to be um, exporting them but this one is the it's the clerestory side so let's open that and there it is and at the moment it's 6615 pixels by 119 which is incorrect size I need it to be 248 by 64 that's the size that I'm using and there it is and I know it looks a little bit like some of the details have been lost which of course it has with the reduction but it's certainly effective as a texture and having done that I'm now going to save it as leave it as that but save the format as TGA and then because that's a power of two um, it's going to be accepted by the by GMAX so here's the side so let's open that up there we are that looks nice and again we're going to resize it notice that it's five times um, if I just cancel that a moment to get to the actual image there we are that's one to one so it's down to five one to five there so um, and this comes in at two five six remember the um, the size of these always has to be a power of two so this is um, 
So 248 16 32 64 128 256. Okay, and then 256 512 1024 2048. And we're not maintaining the aspect ratio because um, the actual size is down here. Um, okay, so we're going to change that. So we slightly altered that. And then we're going to save it as a TGA file there we are and save and there we are we've got our textures and if we just have a look there um, if we have a look at D12 I've already done those and at least I think I did yes I did but I let's just have a look at the TGAs D12 no I haven't done them okay so that's the next thing I've got to do I think is let's go back up here and have a look in the JPEGs. So D12, there's the clerestory. Well, let's do the side first because it's already set to that size. So there's the side look. There we are with the guards, luggage door, double doors there. And it's the incorrect size at the moment. So 2048 by 256, that's okay. File, save as, where are we, TGA. And although these aren't weathered or you know a lot of fancy graphics and that, I think the overall effect is pretty good. I like the um, I like these carriages the way they're coming out. And um, there's the clerestory, D12 break third clerestory there with that long panel. And let's alter this, and that should be 64 pixels. And then it should be saved as a TGA file. There we are save as a TJ file. Okay, so we've got our graphics, our, our um, texture sorted, so now we're going to go into into GMAX, my old favourite, and more than happy to stick with it. And uh, if you just want to have a go at 3D modelling, it's, you know, it's well worth having a go with this. And what I'm going to do here is you'll see I've, I've got previous ones here that I've opened. C9 was a, was a uh, second class, which, I mean, let's have a look at it, C9. There we are. And so that's what it looks like just at the point of export. So there's all these passenger attachment points. There, there's the limb back and limb front. There's the bogey attachment points. And <coughs> you'll see here, this is a corridor attachment point because I've, well, I've modeled the corridor end. I've, um, I've got, you load the, you load the corridor, the extended corridor to this one. Well, it's not fancy animated or anything like that. I'm sure if I put my mind to it, I could probably copy somebody's animation or utilize somebody's animation, but I like to keep things simple. And to me, that's straightforward and looks the part. Uh, so there we are. And we've just got a couple of vents there over the loo windows, a couple of loos there, lavatories. And there's the side corridor running down and you can see inside the, the doors to the compartments. And there we are. Okay, so this particular carriage C9 is shorter than um, any of the other, these two new 56 foot carriages. So uh, what I'm going to do here is um, I think I will, I can use this one as a starting point because we've got the ends. Okay, so we, we can work with those and um, but we only need one of those, so we're going to bring in another end from another model. So from this, this is what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this. Let's just make sure we know what we're talking about here. D17. That's the one we're doing a break third. So I'm going to call this. Let's delete all of that. So I'm going to call it D17. So this is a save as a copy. D17. Break third version 1.1 am I happy with that no I'm not that's not what I want to do I think what I need to do is to open a model which has all the doors still in place so let's have a look at that c4 third version 2.2 let's have a look at that one Mainly because of the doors are, yeah, there we are, it's a shorter carriage as well, it's not corridor. So we're going to come back to the corridor ends. But anyway, there we are. So I'll use this one. So um, save as. 
And what was it again? Again, D17 break there. Honestly, D17 break third. Let's keep that down a minimum. Version 1.1. Delete the other bits there. Okay. And for this, um, I'm going to a whole load of subgroup, which I suspect all the doors. And I'm sure I've got passenger attachment points somewhere. And all this. Yeah, there they are. Look. And I'm sure they're all grouped. By the looks of it in this early stage of a model. Yeah, passengers 03. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I'll leave passengers 01, pick up the rest. <coughs> and just delete them. Get them out of the way. And... Uh, the next thing I'll do is take passengers. Where are we? Passengers 01, and I'll ungroup that. So that leaves me with some attachment points. Now I know I've got the corridor end. These don't have the corridor ends. This one doesn't have the corridor end. Doesn't matter. I'm going to bring that in from another model at some stage. But it gives me a starting point. But remember, these are going to be 56 there to there 56 feet wrong and this is obviously much shorter a bit shorter than that maybe about 10 feet right okay what do I do I then pick up all of my attachment points and I'm going to group them up uh, I'll call it a, there we are very inventively attachment points and I'm going to hide them and I'll come back to them I'm not worried about them uh, the next thing I want to do is to basically delete everything that I'm not going to need uh, for this so uh, I'm going to take out the clerestory and I'm going to need the letters letter that's, that's the that's the GWR lettering and these are all so the side and the doors are grouped together so let's ungroup those and let's take the side out and then I said, I wonder if the doors are grouped. Yes, they are. So I'm going to pick up all the doors. Is the no, that's good. So the class is also there. So I'm going to need that, and I'm actually going to need. Let's see if that's going to. If I hide those, yeah, the door handle is going to be hidden as well. And these are the grab handles that sit on the body. So I'm going to want those. I'm going to pick those up. That's the seats. That's not what I want. There we are. Oops. Let's try and pick up what I want. And the seats. I just want that. And I want that. Okay. And I can hide that out of the way. Now I suspect I've got the in inside. No, no, that's okay. I thought I had the inside face of the side there as well but this will be all one group so I'll ungroup that and I'll delete that and you can see I've got some uh, all the glass is gone as well I can take that out of the way as well but I've left the glass for the clerestries and these all groups so I'm going to do the same on this side I'm just hiding these and pick up those handles I suspect there's actually hmm Maybe what I'll do actually, looking at it, is I'll go into this side here and let me see, I can hide the roof, and the two parts of the clerestory, and the, the little rain thingy jig. I'm sure there's a technical word for it. I'll just call it thingy jig. Just looking at all of that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide it all. I should have just done that. There we are, just hide. This is what I need here. So now I've got a 56 footer. So I've got to convert this to a 56 footer. So the way that I do this is really basic. Let's make a box. And I make sure it is, this is about a 40 footer, it is 56 feet. And I make sure I'm centered on it. And I make sure that, that it is at the zero point. It doesn't matter about the height too much, not very well. And let's just drop it down. 
Okay, so essentially what I've got to do is make this piece here and all of this. Let's have a look at it. There we are, this includes the floor. So what I want to do is to But I'm going to come back just thinking again here. I'm going to make that a different colour and I'm going to drop it, drop it down so it overlaps a little bit there. And I'm going to pick those bits up and then I'm going to move them. Get right in and position. There we are. And, uh, what I do is I group them, then I get a position for the whole group, which is 271010251. 27, 10, 2, 5, 1. Group minus 2710 2, 5, 1. Let's just make sure that is right. Sometimes the center, yep, that's fine. Okay, so now I'm going to lose that box and just edit these so I'll take these vertices move these out wrong uh, should be just in the x-axis there we are let's just move and let's just have a quick look in there So this is the piece that we want to look at and I think I must have deleted it from my earlier pieces. So now what I'm doing is I'm extending, I'm going to extend the, these uh, parts of the frame. Take that out. And that's gone out to 240649. Okay. 
okay now we just got to extend the steps and possibly insert another vertical support <coughs> spread them out a little bit so let's take this one and take it out to 24 26 and 2 inches and there's 26 2 inches ok and we've got another one in there 26 and here 26 inches and then the lower step is usually just a little bit shorter so I'm going to make that 26 mm, no I'm not I'm going to make it 25 foot 9 purely arbitrary on my part there we go 25 foot 9 inches and then there's another one in there because there's a step to the other side Let's just do those. <coughs> and here. Okay. Now the only other thing to do really is to make these vertical supports. I can move those together. One, two, three, four five feet so it's 18 feet at the moment so move that to 23 and this one to 23 With all of these I'm trying to create the impression of the of the frame rather than the nuts and bolts accuracy which I'm not too concerned about. So much of it being hidden. But there we are, that gives the overall effect of the 56 foot carriage and now my next stage is to actually create the mesh by which the carriage side for the carriage side so first of all I'll make a plane and I'll make it 56 feet long by 6 foot 3 inches high which is the standard height that I'm using throughout okay and we're not going to worry too much about that at the moment but now we need to edit some of the materials so up here I've got a number of things which I'm going to be pretty standard. Clerestry side, well that's the clerestry side for, if we have a look in that, for the carriage C4. So we're going to change that to D17, that's our carriage up there. D17, where are you? Is it D17 or is it D12 I'm meant to be doing? Honestly. D17 break third, D break second. Let's have a look. Okay, so it's not D17, it's D12. Hmm. Right, so D12, 
Uh, where are we? Clara Street, the uh, Clara Street. Open. Okay, and so I've got to change the name of this in a minute. And mirrors, outline diagram, outline end, plan C4 end. Don't need that. So I can delete it. Side is going to be D12. I can't actually remembered which one it was. There we are. That's the one I made earlier. That's the JPEG. That's the wrong one. It has to be the TGA. Let's just make sure I've got the clarity one correct. Clarity side. Yeah, that's a TGA. And then here, uh, outline diagram is the side plan. So this is the best this can be the JPEG side plan. There it is. And then the outline end I don't need. Delete that. Mirror GWR letters frames end door. Clarity and clarity side. Clarity end. Yeah, I need that. Outline diagram. Okay, so I need a new one, which should be Clarestry Plan. So I know where I'm going to put the. Now we've got D12, not D17. Clarestry Plan, there it is. Open. Okay, so uh, what I'll do is I'll make a, a copy of this one. First of all, I'm going to position it correctly. It needs to be centered. Doesn't matter about the height at this stage. <coughs> and then I'll make a duplicate and make it one foot instead of six foot three. Okay, and for that I'm going to paste the Clara Street plan. So let's have a look at that. There we are, and all it is is the where the actual um, windows are in the clerestory section. So that's all we've got on that one. And then on this one is going to be the side plan or the outline diagram. I'll just call it on this. And if we have a look at that, let's make sure that that's positioned OK. Looks like it. And that's where I've got to put doors and windows in the mesh. Now there's a slight complication to this because um, there is a uh, tumble home, as it were. The lower part of the carriage does curve inwards and is indeed to the ends. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge a bit of where are we? Uh, documents. Car insurance. Happy days. Trains projects. Um, Models, standard gauge carriages, here we go, and I'm trying to remember what I called it now, it's just sort of like a, a, a bit of bottom bit, something like that, or what do call that, and steps and handrails, frames, guard ducats, internal doors, you can see all these different passenger attachment points. Pictures and mirrors, roof bit, <laughs> very in informative. Seat, single wheel, axle boxes. I don't see it there. Yeah, I know it's there somewhere. Passenger pictures. And steps and handrails. Doors. I suppose I should put the bottom bit. There you go. So we're just going to merge that. Here it is. Okay, and there it is. So what this piece is is it's the standard shape that I'm using. Here it is down here. 
is the standard shape that I'm using at the to provide the inward curving section of the um, each of the carriage sides and indeed the end. Although I use I'll bring in a copy of one of the ends of the carriages to do that. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is uh, there it is over there. And we've got these awful colours. Let's change the colours of those so I can at least see them. I mean, I have a chance of actually being able to see the things. Um, so what I want to do is bring that over and I'm going to rotate it. Let's go in and Y and rotate it by 90 degrees. Oh, that's I was watching it down here. So now, if we see that side on, you can see that's the bit that goes where the carriage side goes in, <coughs> and we'll see that reflected in the doors that I'm, I've hidden away, but which will reappear like magic. Uh, okay, so let's just save this a moment, and I'm going to close it. I'm just going to open up something else. There we are. Because what I want to do is to go into here and D D17. There it is. I'm going to change that to D12. Okay. So now I'm going to open and down D12. There we are. Just to get the right number. There we are. We're back where we were. And I'm also going to save this as version one copy two. Always work with two copies. Because <coughs> you're bound to lose something if the GMAX crashes. Right, now my next stage is to go into wireframe and to raise this bottom bit, inventively called, until it is precisely where it should be in line with the plan if we have a look over here you see there it is in line with the plan which I'm going to be using okay so now we need to do the, the mesh and the way I do these it's very straightforward is um, I go into splines I make a rectangle is going to be 50 foot long, 56 foot long, but I'm not worrying that I'm not using the full depth <coughs> because uh, you'll see why shortly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to convert that into an editable spline, pick up the vertices, and drop them down. make sure this is centered in place there we are we've got a little bit we got half an inch or half an inch out there we are you can see that jump into place and now let's just pick up those two that lower vertices again <coughs> and uh, drop them down so they're precisely on the bottom bit which we're going to use. We're going to use it several times. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to produce a, um, a spline which has got the doors and um, uh, windows holes, apertures in them and but it's only going to be the depth of that and then I'm going to add the curved bits along the bottom. It's probably an easier way of doing this but I find this the most um, reliable having loused it up a few times in other ways. So it doesn't look very clear now. There we are, we can see our plan. We zoom in. Now I know the doors are six foot by two foot. So that's my next rectangle. And it's gonna be six foot by two foot. Okay. 
and these are all working on the zero axis by the way the front moving back and forth in, if you see here just to see the grid there we are it's on this zero axis but up here okay so let's position some doors first job is to get it down to place line it up with the first one let's try and do that I'll zoom in I was when I started doing these I was sort of faffing about with all sorts of clever measurements and positioning and all that sort of thing and I realised it didn't make a heap of the difference when it came to the final model because a minute um, difference or not error but minute difference was um, invisible on the final model so I gave it up there we are and that is a let's make that an editable spline let's make this one an editable spline as well and let's just put in the other doors so we've got a single door there I'm just going to show you in these videos exactly how I do it and how long it takes. And I know I've done other videos which are of other making other models and indeed making a similar model to this, but show these again the extra videos up because I think the more of these where you can actually see what I'm doing then the more it might encourage you to have a go yourself because there are thousands of railway prototypes out there all desperate for um, uh, models and um, frankly I think you know there's so much potential you should really have a go these are the double doors, these are going to be the luggage, guards luggage doors. Not quite sure why it's going into wireframe. So glorious aspect which I need G Max knows. There we are. Okay. And now we do the windows. So um, again I'm going to make a rectangle. I'm just going to choose one window to start with. Now it's chosen a rather nicely visible. I think that's eight and a quarter, not eight point two six three, and I think uh, that's oh, that's the width anyway. Two foot four, mm, two foot four and a half. Mm, jumped up from the bottom there. What about three quarters of an inch? I have found that using Russell's, the plans in Russell's book, some of them are really quite sharp. Others are rather. <clears throat> let's put it politely uh, less clear and um, let's get the width of this one foot three no one foot two maybe yeah and so getting those sort of positions getting those sort of details where are we mm, I think it's maybe a bit too big on so 1.75 of an inch yeah I think so and now corner radius that's the one I find is the 1.575 it's one of the presets but it seems to work well it looks okay and then let's just clone those across The other thing I found is the lack of uniformity. That that distance there is not necessarily that way. You can see it's not that distance there. And this is the way in which GWR coaches they're almost bespoke. They're almost because you know, it's all the days of hand building, um, you know, uh, craftsmanship and all the rest of it. They they really are 
They do vary quite a bit. <laughs> it's almost as if it's the whim of the carriage uh, workshop manager at any particular time. So I'm just cloning these and positioning them by I. And then the only other one that we need is the tumble home or whatever it's called, the ducket rather, not the tumble home. Um, and you notice these are all rectangles so I'm not going to worry about making them into well I'll make this one into an editable spline because what I need to do is to increase its size so I'm going to pick up the um, control points for that so there we are, so that's going to be the hole through which the guard leans in order to look along the train through his ducket ok so that doesn't look particularly interesting but um, the next thing I need to do is to edit some of these. So I'm going to turn that into, this is where I realise I could have done things so much easier if I just did this first. What I'm going to do is turn that into a spine, I'm looking at vertices and I'm going to add two vertices to that, just arbitrarily add it in there. I'm going to go into wireframe and what I'm going to do is pick up each vertice Vertex, 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 whatever, and position it on the part of the original, the out, the whole exterior frame, the whole of the carriage, because this bit here is going to be filled in by clones of this. So now let's have a look at segments and take out these. Okay. Now this is where I could have saved myself a lot of time because I now just got to clone all those along again. I've already positioned them, but what the heck? Let's just save it just to make sure we don't do anything crazy. Save as D12 break. Oh, where are you? D12, pop one for 1.1. Okay, so now we're going to clone and position. Oops, not that one, that one. And delete that. And then clone. And position it. to the double doors. So what I shall do with those is, yes I shall clone it again, move it and position it on this one and then I shall take this and then I can take that and just clone it, bring it along, move it into place here, let's come right in, and delete the left one, delete the right one, okay so there we are, now of course I've got to do, add some vertices down here, so I'm going to, I mean editable spline, that's the out exterior real one, and I'm going to refine it by adding in some attachment points or well, not attachment points, vertices dear me vertices, vertices, vertices vertices I'm just dumping these in at the moment ok, now we've added all those, now let's 
dive in and position them. So they, what they're going to do, of course, is they're going to link up with the space for the doors and I'm going to delete the bit in between. Again, there's probably some brilliantly quick and easy and clever way of doing this. I've not found it. So my ponderous, slow, boring, repetitive method is the one I opt for. And there we are. And now Submit that the more of these carriages that I do, the more I lose track on all the, the lettering and which ones I've done. And I haven't yet done the one that I've already finished against yet, so but it could happen. So here we are with the all of these vertices lining up. Now, I know this looks like you know, sort of hassle, I suppose it is. But the real payoff comes when you've got it all sorted out and you put the texture on it. It looks lovely. Okay, so we've got those. So now let's go over to segments. We want to delete the segments, the sections in between. Okay, so having done those, then my next step is to pick up the um, outer. Let's have a look at in here. So we can see what we're doing. Here it is. Look. In fact, to make it more straightforward, let's um, so you can actually see in detail how it goes together. Let's pick up the the plan, push it back, and now you can see very clearly. It's in, still in line, but you can see all these different colours. Now, if they were all connected up, then they'd all be the same colour. So what I'm going to—that's what I'm now going to do. I'm going to make connect them all up together so that when I extrude them into three dimensions um, then we'll get holes where there should be holes and you know everything will be joined up but first of all we need to join them all up and then we need to weld points together so highlighting this and then attach and as I click on attach for the window you see it changes colour but it's the same as this because it's now part of that mesh and the door space and that one and that one and that one this door space that window that window door space, window, window, door space, um, that's for the ducket, the guard's ducket, that's for the guard's doors, and there we are, okay, now if we would try to extrude this, we wouldn't, um, it wouldn't work, because these are connected together, they're, they're attached together, but they're not connected together as such, and so if we have a look at vertices, um, there's all sorts of, well, there are actually two vertices there, there's the end vertice, vertex for this door space, and for this and the other one is for this piece coming along here. So if we highlight that, you see there's four control handles there. There should only be two. So what we're going to do is weld those together. There we are. That's just two now. And weld those together. And weld those together. And in GMAX, um, for tra when you're using the Trains plugin, Trains Games Pack, it always gives just under four inches as the as the uh, distance at which. Um, uh, vertices will weld together which is always really high I think because if we pick up those and those if they were just four inches apart they all blob together as a single um, point so what I do is um, well either only a tenth of an inch weld those together because we know that those are more than a tenth of an inch from there to there is more than a tenth of an inch so if I just pick them all up I'm just holding down the control key while I'm doing that and then weld them together and then uh, the last ones to do are these ones here and just weld those together and then basically for each <coughs> each re each continuous line um, we should just see one of these there it is uh, one of those uh, points which are which look I've got that little sort of square in them and the others have just got little lines 
Okay, so that now gives us an editable spline. Uh, and the normal depth, the normal width I use for the side. So there we are, I've clicked on extrude, it's produced a a sort of three dimensional image. What it's done is it's showing that all of the vertices are connected together. But as if we spin this round, you see there's no depth to it at all. So we have to give it a depth. So extrude, there's the amount. We're going to give it two inches. There we go. And we've got our 3D carriage side. Um, we've only got part of it though because we haven't got the curvy bit at the bottom and this is the reason why I do these um, in this way is because the um, the curvy bit at the bottom there um, if I started to do that every time it's bo so boring so I've just done it as a separate piece um, let's just make a clone of that so that we've got it safe and also let's push it up I think that, that's the wrong way uh, maybe that's the right way no, that's not the right way either. Push it up out of the way, and also we can lose the plan. That's just going to get in the way otherwise. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this and run it all the way along here, and then I'm going to attach it. Uh, and because I'm going to attach it, I need to lose... Let's have a look in wireframe. Um, if we have a look in wireframe, you can see that let's just not select that, let's select this you can see there's a face all the way along there and that's just going to be lost because when I'm going to attach this this is going to be uh, the face the upper, up top face of that is going to be facing the bottom face of that so they're going to be hidden so if you if you you know to save on polys um, you can um, remove those faces so I'm going to collapse this that's why I made a copy because I, I wanted to make sure I still had the spline because so I can unextrude it and, I've, and I can go back to this line and edit it. So always make copies. So I'm going to collapse this one uh, down to a poly. Um, and you'll see the size of that poly. There it is. 318 points and um, 318 polys. And then there's some polys. So I'm going to take away. That's highlighted that one. I'm making, removing those faces because I don't need them. They're going to be concealed when I put the bottom bit, that curvy bit, up against them. And let's just check on that curvy bit to see if we've got a face at the top. Because if we have, we have, yes we have, look. So I can delete that as well. So I don't need that. And that's the one I'm going to clone to make all of the curvy bits at the bottom and it's quite a straightforward process so I move in here and with the first one just move it along here we are and make oops, vertices make sure they're at where are we 50, uh, 56 should be 28 feet shouldn't it there we are 28 feet and then this one I can just do by eye, zoom in, bring it along. Okay. There we are. Now, the other thing I need to do is let's clone that as well, just to give us another one. We've got to do the other side, and let's push it up out of the way. And also what I need to do is I need to align this with this one because if we look here, side view, looking on the side, then we're way out, we're all over the place. So this one, if I do any more, let's move it into position, zoom right in. to do is I will create an additional piece which is just a box which is going to be the same height it's not worth playing game sometimes you get this Eugene so it won't do a small size so I've just made a box there I'm going to convert it to an edible poly straight away 
and I'm going to edit the vertices. Let's take those up. Let's look, make sure we're absolutely spot on with this. And with this one. And take it up to the top there. And then sideways. Now I'm going to zoom in, get it right. And this one, get it right. I can see the bottom still isn't right, is it? So let's go right in. Okay, so this is going to be the little bit of the side of the carriage that goes underneath the door. Let's just centre up the crosshairs on that. And let's have a look at it back here. And there it is, tucked away. So um, if I move that over to here. On some of the first ones that I did, I just made a single long piece. I didn't really like that. I think that was what I was looking at when I was first extending this uh, framing. And I didn't really like that at all. So I'm going to come back to that uh, in a moment because um, I don't want to alter this one too much. But you'll see the whole point of it in a minute. So let's get that positioned. this is of interest to you just to see that how detailed really the sort of work is that you've got to do to build up one of these carriages I mean they may look fairly routine or rudimentary but even these I mean they've got all the bells and whistles that are possible in trains I mean there's no interior I don't do interiors um, for example which would be take places as long but it's because um, my approach to trains is that very much of a uh, in the round you know I like to see I like to see a lot of trains going and because so few of the models that are available in trains are the type that I like or that I want to see that's why I end up making them these Great Western Railway carriages I'm sure other models out there could produce some fantastic models of them and um, they'd be quite substantial downloads I would have thought as well as far as all, all the detail and that that you could put into them and you know much more um, refined models than I can produce but I like to go with what I can first of all what my PC will run it's an i5 not bad it's a couple of years old now um, but um, I think it's sort of like middle of the road standard pretty much what what trains are using I mean, come the day when I can actually afford an Alienware i7 or whatever fantastic chip it will be then with zillions of uh, gig of memory and uh, some sort of fantastic graphics card which you used to create, I don't know, a sequel to Avatar or something like that. And, um, you yeah, know, come the day then, sure, you know, I'll make more detailed models, but until that day comes and there's nothing in sight, um, then uh, this is what I'm going to stick with is producing models like this so as you can see they are moving along I'm putting the um, curved section at the bottom of each carriage you can see it building up here look. 
just along, so that's why I was whittering away while I was doing it, because it's just a you know, repetitive task. And then for the last one, just position that in place, and move that along, and place it down by the door frame there, and then bring these in, and they should be at 28 feet. There we go. Right, there we are. So that's that bit. That's, I wouldn't say that's the easy bit, but it's certainly a, an important bit. So now with this one, which you remember was that small box that I just created, I'm now going to bring that along. Because I know that my door frame is six foot by two foot. There it is. Oh, that's four foot by six foot by four foot there. So it's two doors. And let's just centre that up and grab that bit should be the same because that's another four foot opening position there we go hmm. is that correct that's correct now that's a bit over so let's see what we can do there let's be a little more precise won't really matter because any bit that's over is just going to be blended in with the, this piece here. But it's nice to be precise, if at all possible. And this is wrong, right? So let's move this. Okay, and that gives us that one. And then we just got to do two foot sections there under each door. Reading, I could have made it just two foot long and another one four foot long. But you only remember these things after you've already done these, so I think, oh well, there you go. Eccoci là, dove siamo. Which in the local saying here is, there we are and where are we? But that one was in Italian. Now there we are, that's it in the perspective view in wireframe. And um, what I can now do, which I suppose I should have done before I started cloning them, is I can just go in and lose the end poly. See, that would have saved a lot of time, wouldn't it? If I'd just done that on the first one and just cloned them up, they'd all have that end poly missing. This is what's needed always to save polys that's in pretty poly but I'm just going to do this now just as I got caught with it believe me the end, resu end result is worth all the hassle there we are and there's another one. <laughs> what I could do now is I could just change the colour of that so I know which one it is. Edit clone. Okay. See if I just do it um, X Y, yeah. And just pick up the red one. Delete it. <laughs> Poly. Not sure it's any quicker. I suppose I tend to do this because I always assume that I'm going to need those 
polygons, that, that closed end, just in case I need it. I tend to leave it and then delete it at this stage to try and reduce the overall polys on the, in the model. And of course what we can do now, more like watching the paint dry, is to delete the bottom poly in these. And we are going to use them again, so although it's a bit of a drag, it will be, you know, it will be of use again when we do the other side. Because to do the other side, what I would do is, um, obviously we've got the other side over here if we want it, um, ready to rock and roll. And I shall rotate all of these individual sections. So that they will then line up with the other side when we get there. And uh, well, I'm just going to carry on. Okay, so I'm going to pause this video here and come back with the next part uh, fairly shortly when we'll see the uh, this original this mesh, which is as you can see is now building up quite nicely for the um, brake third carriage side. Um, these will all be combined together and then I'm going to put the texture over the whole lot. So that's what I'll cover in the next video to show you how I'm finishing, how I'm making and finishing the uh, final two side corridor uh, carriages to make up this 1890-1900 uh, Great Western Railway um, standard passenger uh, train for um, long express um, uh, journeys to South Wales, to the to Fishgar, but also to Liverpool and also to the South West, Plymouth and Penzance. So look out for the next part of this video. Uh, should be coming over the next sometime over the next few days. And um, please uh, comment if you have any um, anything to say about the video or anything about the, what I'm doing here in um, GMAX and trains. Uh, questions always welcome and uh, please if you haven't already done so subscribe to my channel it's free there's no commitment and it's completely anonymous so watch out for part two